What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Feisty, fearless, and fair. She's an Emmy-winning journalist from the White House to war zones, telling all sides of the story. This is the Rita Cosby Show. Lovely Rita, meet a maid, nothing can come between us. When it gets dark, I tow your heart away. Breaking news. And tonight on the Rita Cosby Show, well, more information coming from the White House in the last few minutes. A new letter has been released from the White House after a chaotic and dismal day where reporters from all different media outlets were hammering Corinne Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, peppering her with questions about President Biden's mental abilities and what kind of doctors, specifically those who are dealing with neurological issues, What type of meetings may have occurred? This just coming in, a new letter from the White House stating that he has not seen a neurologist outside his annual physical. And that begs the question, why hasn't he? Because we have seen so many different issues. Look at the debate Look at the way he handled himself with George Stephanopoulos during the ABC interview and so many questions about his physical gait, his mental abilities, his freezing. Very odd that now we are seeing this letter coming from the White House that the neurologist White House visits recently, there were ones with Parkinson experts and others that they only came, according to the White House, to see other patients and not President Biden himself, which is interesting. Again, why hadn't other neurologists met with the president when we have clearly seen mental degradation? Your thoughts, everybody. In many ways, this opens the door to even more questions. 1-800-848-9222. 1-800-848-9222. And again, this comes after a blistering day with Corinne Jean-Pierre getting hammered in every different direction from reporters. Listen to this first off. This was earlier today when there were reports of, in fact, a expert from Parkinson's who sort of has an expert on the neurology debilitation of Parkinson's, apparently that a Parkinson's expert had visited the White House eight times over an eight-month span. So, of course, reporters were saying, well, was this for the president? Was it for somebody else? Who was it attached to? And Corinne Jean-Pierre acted like Jen Psaki and did circle back Psaki's all over the place. Here is the, some of the exchanges from earlier today, which certainly now begs even more questions than answers. Take a listen. Well, you know, that's, that's a very basic, direct question. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. House, wait a two, second. Eight wait. times, or at least once, in regards to I the just, president wait. specifically. Hold on a Not second. Not you should be able to answer by this point. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Come, Ed, please. A little respect here, please. So every year around the, the president's physical examination, he sees a neurologist. That's three times, right? So I am telling you that he has seen a neurologist three times while he has been in this presidency. 
That's what I'm saying. I am telling you that he has seen them three times. That is what I'm sharing with you, right? So every time he has a physical, he has had to see a neurologist. So that is answering that question. No, it's not. No, it is. It is. It's You're Dr. asking Kevin me. Kennard, come I to can't, the White House. But I just, and I also said to you, condition. Ed, I also said to you, for security reasons, we cannot share names. We cannot share names. We have to. We have to. Others he would have met with. We but cannot can share names no, 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 in regards no, no. to if we, someone came here. No, in regards we to cannot the share. We cannot share names of specialists broadly, it, from a dermatologist to a neurologist. We cannot share names. There are security reasons. No, we, have to, we have to. We have to protect. I understand I that. I, un I, I hear it's you. Right I, there for anyone to see. Ed, I hear you. I cannot from here confirm any of that because we have to keep their privacy. I think they would appreciate that, too. Understood about HIPAA reasons. But now they are claiming tonight, and this is coming from Biden's doctor, again, all this news just breaking in, that he hasn't seen a neurologist outside of the physical exam, which begs the question, are you kidding me? I, I mean, that this is just defies belief. My reaction hearing this is, are you kidding me with all of these claims that have happened of late about his mental degradation and his cognitive issues? If you're telling me, according to Biden's doctor, and there are some reports tonight that he may have a conflict of interest, that he may be getting money from the Biden family, according to reports, that he hasn't seen a neurologist outside his physical exam, which is an annual exam. The last one he had was recently in February. And we've all seen a marked decline in the president's mental ability since February. I I've seen it, and I'm not a doctor. But you're looking at a number of things that we have seen, and look at the debate. Wouldn't you say, listen, we need to get some neurology experts in to look at at the president of the United States. He seems to be having some mental issues. Let's bring in a neurologist. Have they intentionally not had neurologists see him, only saving it for the mental one-year exams, if you will, the basic physical exams? That's stunning to me. Is This seems like medical malpractice. You're kidding me that they would not be suggesting or saying we need to have a mental expert, someone who is a neurology expert, looking for a whole bunch of different things. By the way, I just did an interview with Dr. Peter Mihalos, and he is our sort of WABC medical genius, if you will, board and certified physician. He brought up the fact that the president obviously is going through a lot of stress. He also brought up uh, atrial fibrillation, he also brought up the fact that the president has had uh, two aneurysms, remember, where they had actually surgery on his brain. That was when he was in, uh, I think, in his 40s. So all of these things could contribute. It may not even have anything to do with Parkinson's. But all of these things would cause issues potentially to someone's brain. The stress of the job, the stress of what's going on with his son, Hunter. All of these things coupled with the surgeries that he had on his brain years ago. Wouldn't you say you got to have intense medical and specifically cognitive exams on somebody with that history, let alone what we are clearly seeing visibly? This is a shocker. And it comes, of course, at a time where the president of the United States says he's not going anywhere. We know that the Democratic Party has been saying this guy uh, there are a number of them who are suggesting that he step down, that he not run for another term, that he pass the torch to Kamala Harris or somebody else. But in the middle of all of these things, we're hearing that the president isn't going anywhere. And then they want us to believe that he hasn't had any neurological exams outside a physical exam that is a one-year annual exam. And they're also saying that he hasn't, quote, seen a neurologist. So when you see a neurologist, what is that, via Zoom? Oh, yeah, I'm answering fine. Everything's fine. Okay, good. We don't need to check further. So was it just some, like, basic 
neurological question that maybe the doctor didn't even see firsthand, that maybe even the doctor just actually happened to like talk with him on a Zoom? Because we heard that after the debate that he had some sort of meeting with the doctor, everybody assumed it was face to face. We found out today it was via Zoom. Hi, Doc. I'm feeling great. Okay, good. Let's move on. So tonight, they are telling us that the President of the United States, according to his doctor, remember, it's his personal doctor, so again, we have to look into the background, all this stuff, hasn't seen a neurologist outside of his annual physical exam. I contend that's medical malpractice. 1-800-848-9222, 1-800-848-9222. And here is Dr. Ronnie Jackson, because this is his reaction to when there was a report earlier today that the Parkinson's expert had visited the White House multiple times. And he said, boy, there are just so many problems with all of this. Again, remember, he's the former White House physician for Obama and also for President Trump. So he knows what he's talking about. He's been inside the Oval Office and dealt with all of this stuff. Here's his reaction to some of that news that was reported earlier today. The cat is out of the bag. Dr. Kennard, who's a movement uh, disorder specialist and a neurologist from Walter Reed, came to the White House. He was waved into the residence clinic, which is the clinic directly below the president's bedroom, which is specifically to treat the president and members of the first family. Unless they're saying that the people that filled out the logs are lying, then it's established that Dr. Kennard came to the White House and he came to the residence clinic at the beckoning of Dr. Kevin O'Connor, who's the president's physician. And why are we listen to this box of rocks who calls herself the press secretary talk to us about the president's medical issues. Why isn't Dr. Kevin O'Connor, who's the appointed physician to the president, standing at the podium and answering questions from the press about what is going on with the president? I, I would tell you at this particular point, Laura, I think it's medical malpractice if he hasn't been seen by a neurologist yet to evaluate his cognitive issues. I'm sure he has, and I'm sure he's probably being treated, and they won't bring mm. Dr. O'Connor to the podium because they don't want us asking those questions of him because he's going to have to admit that, yes, he's been evaluated and most likely, yes, he's being treated for whatever cognitive issue he's got going on Mm -hmm. that's on display for the whole world at this point. Wow, box of rocks. That was an interesting one. He's describing Corinne Jean-Pierre. 1-800-848-9222. 1-800-848-9222. Let's real quick go to Joan. Uh, Joan, line three, your thoughts. Hey, Rita, thank you for talking to me tonight. I got a lot on my mind. Uh, uh, first of all, Miranda Devine had a wonderful article in yesterday's paper. Or was it today's? Anyway. Uh, it was yesterday's, really, and I saw it, by the way. It was great. I agree with you. Oh, my God. You know what the big surprise was? How the Bidens and the Obamas do not have any love lost between them. Hunter does not like Obama. He felt like... Uh, Obama disrespected his father when he was VP. And you know what? I, it, it makes me feel a lot more respectful of Obama and Michelle. Because you know what? The, the Bidens are a crime family. So, like, hats off to them that they were uh, classy enough and intelligent enough to see what was what's going on. By the way, you know what? Number also, two, there was a report also, Joan, uh, not that long ago. And I didn't realize this until this came out publicly. I can't remember if this was in um, Miranda's, but I know this came out even earlier. That um, and by the way, Miranda's a great reporter, so I, I love reading her I stuff. I love her. But there was a story that terrific. Michelle uh, Obama was angry because Hunter's ex-wife, she and Hunter's ex-wife, are close friends, yes. and she felt that Hunter really like uh, dissed uh, dissed his, uh, yep. you know, the ex-wife, and they, you know, and she just heard some horrible things. And so, but real quick, uh, what do you, what do you, does it trouble you that it seems like Hunter and, you know, Dr. Jill Biden, who isn't a doctor, doctor, uh, but, uh, you know, a, uh, educational doctor, but especially Hunter apparently is like his closest confidant right now. Your thoughts. Okay. Well, first of all, let's look at Jill first, briefly. Yeah, briefly, uh, real like quick. on Vogue magazine four years in a row. Are you kidding me? She's in vogue, and the president is vague. I love that New York Post uh, cover. And what about Hunter? What about Hunter? Yeah, 
Let's go there. Right. Why is a convicted felon, ex-drug addict, sitting in on possibly high security meetings? I agree. Security? Joan, that is exactly the question. And in fact, there are many Republicans tonight who are looking into that from the Intel Committee, because just like you said, it is a major, major security issue. 1-800-848-9222. Republicans are looking into it. Is it true that Hunter is sitting in on the meetings or not? Uh, and if he is, uh, a convicted felon? Is that the right thing? 1-800-848-9222. The Rita Cosby Show. Economists warn that massive tax hikes could devastate your IRA and 401k as the stock market braces for impact. I'm Larry Kudlow, and I urge you to fortify your savings with physical gold with my friends at Priority Gold. To learn how gold and silver can help diversify your savings, please call 1-800-405-GOLD or just visit PriorityGold.com to get a free gold information guide. That's one 800 Four zero five gold. America, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of education, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our online bachelor's, master's, and doctoral education degree programs allow you to balance online coursework with observational and hands-on experience in the field. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. It's the Rita Cosby Show. And as President Biden is fighting for his political life, he is calling into Morning Joe and he said he is not going anywhere. And he also further said that as things are going forward, he is planning on being back in the White House. Although tonight, President Trump came out and said that he thinks that they will be facing Kamala Harris in November. So there are lots and twists and turns here. And clearly, President Biden's mental acuity and health are on center stage after the debate stage. 1-800-848-9222. 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Sandra in New Jersey. Sandra, your reaction? Oh, well, good evening, Rita. Speaking of Kamala Harris, um, I feel... You got to get off her. the speaker, Sandra. You got to be on the phone. Okay. Um, speaking of Kamala Harris... And by Harris, the way, everybody, you got to be... No speaker phones. No speaker phones. Go ahead, Sandra. <laughs> Okay. Speaking of Kamala Harris, I'm very angry at her. She deceived us about Joe for four years. Never, she lied to us like he's well, he's great, he's this, he's that. So I don't like that. She can't be trusted. Um, and, and and I feel that um, going forward, I really feel if we get her and they were saying Budacek <laughs> for the VP and her for the president, what a ticket. I don't think that would be a good ticket between Budacek, how... He uh, failed the aviation a part of his job. And then I remember that train. So that who do you think, terrible. Sandra, real quick, who do you think? I, I don't know. I, I want Biden to stay in until the end and then let him lose and let's get Trump in. And that's it. That's really what I want to see happen, even though, you know, and I know he's not fit to the job. But for a few more months, let him stay and then let him lose the election. And that's it. That's how I want it to turn out. You want that even even if you feel like he's not mentally fit, uh, because yeah. that's not a good thing for America, you know. But 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 Rita, he, he has all these other people working for him for, for a couple of more months. I don't I don't think it matters. Well, I don't but, know. Well, Maybe you know what's inter- but you know what's interesting, Sandra? They've probably been running the show this whole time anyway. To your point, uh, so you're right. It probably wouldn't be much different. It's just much more visible now for uh, the world to see. 
Everybody, we're going to continue your calls after the break. Some great points there, Sandra. 1 800 848 9222. Cosby is on. The Rita Cosby Show presents Back the Blue. And this Back the Blue segment is sponsored by GoyaCares.com because you are a precious gift from God. And this very powerful story coming from Denver, Colorado, where a recently released video showed officers rescuing a dog reaching near dangerous temperatures from a locked trailer outside of Denver, prompting a very stern reminder about heat safety. Now, police say they received a tip about a trailer parked in a neighborhood for three days. Officer checked it out and found a pit bull mix dog inside the trailer. It was unclear whether the dog had access to water, prompting a lot of concern. Well, it turned out that the dog was definitely dealing with a lot of heat issues. They used infrared thermometer to measure the temperature of the various surfaces inside the trailer. And that varied anywhere from 88 to 98 degrees in the trailer. How sad is that? The dog measured at 100 degrees. So he was clearly overheating significantly. Studies shows temperatures inside a vehicle rise quickly and can become deadly for any dog in less than 20 minutes. They said also if it's 85 degrees outside, the National Weather Service reports that the inside of a car will be 104 degrees after 10 minutes and get this 119 degrees after 20 minutes. Needless to say, the police and also the Humane Society put out messages about this saying, be careful in this hot temperature to look out for your animals, obviously your human friends as well. And everybody take note just how important, important it is to make sure that everybody stays hydrated and stays cool and also providing tips on what to do to keep animals fresh, cool and healthy. Thank goodness. In this case, the dog survived. Thank goodness. Well, everybody, we love doing these stories also of our law enforcement, our men and women in blue, helping our furry friends. We are talking about the President of the United States and his mental capabilities. The big breaking news tonight, just a little bit ago, the White House releasing a letter from President Biden's doctor stating that he has not seen a neurologist Outside of his annual physical exams, which draws even more questions. Why would you not have a cognitive expert at a time where his cognitive skills right now, the president's, are being so big into question? What are you afraid of? If there's nothing wrong, why wouldn't you ask him to take some additional tests and put it out there for the world to see? Why wouldn't you put him out in a press briefing and say, okay, here he is. He's going to answer questions for three, four hours. Don't worry about it. There's nothing, no problem. He'll take any question you have. What do you got? Instead, we are also hearing reports that last week, remember when he did those interviews with those two African-American radio stations? Well, it turns out uh, they were saying they got the questions delivered to them. There was a report that both of them essentially had their questions spoon fed And one of the hosts was on saying, yeah, these were the questions they suggested. They even fired her, her station, for agreeing to those questions. So, I mean, this is just, it's really, really crazy what's out there. And all of these reports coming out make you go, well, he should be having regular cognitive tests. So if now the doctor, this is President Biden's private doctor, is out there saying, Well, he hasn't seen a neurologist outside his regular exam. It begs the question, why not? Doesn't the doctor see what we all see? After that debate performance, there should have been an urgent cognitive exam. Instead, the president keeps saying, oh, the only cognitive exam I need is just being president every day. And also today, uh, when he called in on Morning Joe on MSNBC, he also said, that he is not going anywhere. Listen to what he said. He was defiant. 
He was determined, and he said, I'm staying president of the United States, contrary to some of these Democrats saying they want to push him out. He said, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm still here. The bottom line here is that we're not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. I wouldn't be running if I didn't absolutely believe that I am the best candidate to beat Donald Trump in 2024. We had a Democratic nominating process where the voters spoke clearly. I won 14 right. million of those votes, et cetera. So I, I, I just want, I'm, I not only believe that from the beginning, but I wanted to reassert it and demonstrate that it's true. And I'm going to be doing that all through this week and from here on. And he also said, don't worry about my cognitive abilities. Everything is just fine. Like we didn't see that debate. By the way, in terms of my neurological capacity, I had a physical, a neurological physical as well in February. It's released. I released all my records. All of them. All of them. All of them. I've released all of them. So is this sort of uh, the river of denial? I mean, I've had all of them. Maybe it is all of them because they don't want to be tested. And what kind of doctor says, yeah, don't worry about it. The whole world is talking about his cognitive abilities. The whole world is discussing all of these different issues. And yet we're led to believe that no doctor is suggesting a cognitive test. Nobody at the White House is suggesting a cognitive test. His family isn't suggesting a cognitive test. He's not suggesting a cognitive test. Sometimes they're the last to know. But sometimes you know if you're getting forgetful or any sort of issues like that. There are just way too many questions here. No problem. He's fine. He's like William Shakespeare. Nothing to see there. Albert Einstein. Nothing to see there. This is really troubling. And then tonight again, they are putting out messages saying he's only had it during his regular annual exam. The last one was in February, which means the next one is not happening until 2025. Nothing to see there. Don't worry about it. It just happens to be after Inauguration Day. What a surprise. 1-800-848-9222, 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Alex in Brooklyn. Alex, your thoughts about all this. Hey, Rita, thanks for taking the call. I got a couple of things because just with Joe uh, Biden on Morning Joe, and we're seeing a very different Joe Biden uh, than we've seen throughout these three and a half years. We're seeing a fighter, although he's cognitively not all here, but he's a fighter. And he's fighting, you know why? Because he cares about the fact that he might have to drop out of this race and be president. So although he's been a puppet this three and a half years, uh, he's now fighting those handlers who who were pulling the strings behind him, who were, you know, dictating what policies he should put in place and are now telling him to leave the race. He's not listening to them now. And so Joe Biden, although he's mentally unfit to be president, and although he's really, you know, not somebody that, that should be president, but if he really cared about the American people. He would have fought back against uh, those uh, p- people that were pulling the strings and telling him to sign this executive order, that executive order, and uh, to put these policies that were so destructive for the American people into place. If he cared about the American people, he would have said no, and it, well, he would have fought them, but he didn't give a damn. And that's why we never saw this passion of Joe Biden like we're seeing right now. Right. And, um, and, and, and by the way, the Alex, media, Alex, that's an yeah. interesting point, um, because you're right, he's fighting now, but he is fighting now for his own political survival. I mean, I mean, he even said, which I found a really odd statement when he did that interview with George Stephanopoulos on Friday. And George Stephanopoulos said, you know, uh, what if at the end of the day, essentially, uh, you know, that the Democrats lose the White House, uh, they lose the Senate, uh, they don't get the House, that it stays in Republican hands, um, and you didn't drop out. And his answer was, well, if I did my best, then I'd feel good about it. Like a kid, you know, like if I did my best, dad, I still get a star for trying. Right. And that was his answer, which a lot of people in the Democratic Party were outraged by because they, of course, want to keep the White House and they see the polls as a lot of people do. And it's obviously not good news for the Democrats right now, especially with Biden at the top of the ticket. So my point to you is it's in like. Like he's fighting for himself 
And you bring up a great point. If he only fought like that for the principles of the American people, he didn't fight all this time. And maybe he didn't fight because that's how he feels. So, you know, maybe there wasn't anything for him to fight because he agreed with them. Whether, you know, whether they're pulling the strings or not, you were only seeing the real like fighter now because it's his own self-interest. And yet, you know, what's fascinating, Alex, in the middle of all of this, he's like, oh, I'm the guy who can be Trump. I'm the guy who can be Trump. If you look at the polls, he's not the guy who can, there are even Kamala Harris does better against Trump and some of the latest polls. So he is, he's been blaming Trump for being self-absorbed every night. He says, oh, Trump only cares about himself. I care about the country. What a hypocrisy we are seeing now. If you listen to even some of his fellow Democrats, your thoughts about that, Alex, because the fight is for his own self-interest, not for the country. You're so right about that George Stephanopoulos interview where you made it so clear that it's not even about his party. And it's not about, you know, saying that Trump is going to be a dictator and he's scared of that and he wants to save the country. Because if that was the case, uh, Joe Biden would have dropped out of the race because the polls are showing that he can't beat Donald Trump and anybody else will do a better job. But I also think the media is despicable when I look today at how they're fighting with Karine Jean-Pierre for the truth, actually. But it's not because they care about the truth. And they're making it like these people want answers for the American people and they're asking the tough questions. We where were they two weeks ago asking these very basic questions about Joe Biden's health and uh, the, the things that we saw of him? And, and that what well, you mentioned about that uh, host who now came out and said that he got the questions to ask Joe Biden. Yeah, she did. Yep. CNN. And they were talking on left wing media outlets about it like this is crazy. I saw a couple of months ago a report on Fox News, which wasn't covered by CNN. They didn't talk about it. Where was this? I think a black female a host of a. TV show or she had a TV show where she interviewed Joe Biden a year ago and she came out a couple of months ago and said that Joe Biden, uh, the Biden administration sent her the questions beforehand and that was the only way she was able to do the interview. CNN didn't cover that. Nobody on the left covered that and spoke about that. Well, now they're changing it. And it's not because um, I don't believe the you know, the media. Uh, it's because necessarily because they want to be Donald Trump. I think the media, they're a bunch of puppets just like Joe Biden, because we saw them flip the script in that one minute right after the debate, I believe they got the messages like Joy Bayer was talking about the messages she got via text. I think it was from those handlers of Joe Biden saying it's time we push this guy out. This was an orchestrated plan to get rid of Joe Biden at the end of it. Well, and and Alex and Alex and Alex, hold on one second. You got a lot there. But Alex, also, your point is an interesting one about the fact that uh, they moved up this debate that, remember, it was Joe Biden's team that picked this debate. So you wonder if behind closed doors, uh, clearly this was sort of a test for Joe Biden and he obviously failed. Uh, But maybe, like you said, they were sort of setting him up to fail, except he's now saying he's not going anywhere. Maybe they thought he'd go, okay, I'm going to leave. Yet Jill and Hunter and Joe had other plans. Uh, Alex, thanks so much. By the way, Alex also just brought up um, that host, the African-American host who was on. She's with WURD, and she's the one who did that interview. She's one of the two who did the interview. And she says that she got the questions. She received those interview questions from the White House. Here she is on CNN talking about this. Um, This is cut 14 where she's talking about it. You each were uh, you asked four questions and maybe that's what you were allowed to ask by uh, the campaign or the White House. But they were essentially the same questions, both interviews about accomplishments, progress in your respective state. What's at stake in the election? What he has to say about his debate performance and what he would say to voters who think uh, their vote doesn't matter or might sit this election out. Were those questions given to you by the White House or did you have or the campaign or did you have to submit questions ahead of this interview? The questions were sent to me for approval. I approved them. Okay, so the White House sent the questions to you ahead of the interview. Yes. Okay. I got several questions, eight of them, and the four that were chosen were the ones that I approved. Okay. And the reason I ask is not a criticism of either of you. It's just that if the White House is trying now to prove the um, the vim, vigor, acuity of the president, I don't know how they do that by sending questions first before the interview so that the president knows what's coming. That's amazing. I would have gone, wait, 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 wait. You got the questions. You read those questions. You approve them. 
and he's trying to explain that he is like cognitively swift and the White House is giving you the questions. That is a stunning admission. And it speaks volumes on all sides, but especially volumes from the White House that they would actually submit questions. Uh, The journalist should have said, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. This is ridiculous. I give her a lot of credit, at least for speaking out, because that's appalling. And it makes you wonder how long have they been doing this? Remember in the briefings that President Biden said, wait, you don't abide by the rules. He said that a couple of times to different reporters. Did they maybe agree to other questions or did he was he told that they were agreeing to questions or they were only going to ask questions on certain subjects? There is a lot to unpack here. 1-800-848-9222. And we'll continue your calls after the break. It's the Rita Cosby Show. This is the Rita Cosby Show. And coming up in the Rita Cosby Show, in just a few minutes, uh, President Trump making some interesting comments tonight about what he thinks about President Biden and also Kamala Harris. We're going to talk about that and much more. And also some little bit of movement on the potential VP pick. We're going to talk about that, too, and continue your calls about all of this with President Joe Biden. What an incredible historic week that we are dealing with now. When you think about everything that is happening, this has never happened before in American history. Uh, With all of these shell games that are going on between what's happening on the Democratic side and, again, the Republican National Convention now, only a week away and lots of movement on the Democratic side with President Joe Biden saying he is not going anywhere. 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Dave and Comac. Dave, your thoughts. Hey, how you doing? Good. What do you think? I'm say, listen, before you start making speculative accusations about Biden, right? I think you should have Biden examined by a doctor. You can't make these. I agree. By the way, Dave, I agree with you. But 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 we all saw. Didn't you look at the debate? I no, mean, there's clearly no, no, no. something Rita, going on with Rita? him. No, 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 no. That's speculation. You can't make any uh, conclusions. Without I'm not. Having a doctor I'm just face. saying a doctor should see him. You and I are on the same page in terms yeah, of uh, that a what? doctor before should see him. Happened, don't you think a doctor Trump, should see him? Your buddy Trump don't you think? Head, don't you think a doctor also. should see him? Don't you think a doctor I, should see him? A neurologist. Yeah, but your buddy okay. Trump good. I rest my case. Also. I rest my case. By the way. I'll give you one on this. I hear your, uh, you know, obviously your little political comments there. But what I will say, Dave, is that I think anybody who is in the White House and has the most important job in the world, and I think the president of the United States, and listen, I wish President Biden well. I wish anybody well who's our president. I want them to be incredibly successful, whatever political aisle they're on, because then America is successful. But I actually do think. That if you're in in that position, there should actually be a cognitive test. And maybe it's every few months uh, because I think it's absolutely critical that they are sharp as a tack. There's a lot of bad actors out here. And that doesn't matter if they're Republican, Democrat, whatever. I think they need to be competent and they need to be checked mentally that they are sharp and ready. Your thoughts about that, Dave? Don't you agree? No matter what it is, let's just get out. Forget the little uh, you don't like Trump. We got it. Anyway, go on. Your buddy Trump needs to see a psychiatrist about his attitude. Well, you know what? Guess what? Uh, President Biden clearly doesn't even want to see a neurologist, period, period. And you saw it in the debates. We're not, you know, just looking at neurology. You got to admit, Dave, and I know you won't, but President Trump clearly was much more mentally attuned and sharper and quippier. But you won't admit that because in your mind, Orange man bad. 
And that's a shame because you should want somebody who is sharp as a tack, whatever their political I will never stripe vote is. For Trump. Whatever I, you obviously won't. You obviously won't. We got that. Never. So that's why that's why you clearly can't have an unbiased opinion. But that's a shame because you should want the presidency to be in the most attuned hands. But good luck, Dave. Good luck with everything. Let's go to Mike on the Lower East Side. Get, give me some logic, Mike. Yeah, really. Maybe this wow, guy's after looking that for no, no. Yeah, he, he forgot that 13 troops uh, were, were abandoned and, and not to shoot the guy that, that had the bombs on him. All right. He was the commander in chief, Dave. OK, so we don't have we don't we, we, we could see right from wrong, too. Yeah. Okay? And guess what? And guess what, Mike? We all want whoever the president is to be in the best of health as sharp as attack most importantly so we are safe so they're aware of all the bad actors we're dealing with and if you go in i hate trump well you're not going to get anywhere with that one this is Greg Kelly for Priority Gold. What does it mean to be America's precious metals dealer? It means that you're in touch with the hearts and minds of those who love this country, value our freedom, and want to protect the future. Priority Gold is that precious metals dealer. They've helped thousands of Americans back their retirement with solid gold and silver. Call Priority Gold at 888-506-6439. Receive free shipping, free storage, a free investment guide, and one of the best purchase experiences in the industry. Call now or go to PriorityGold.com.